Good morning, it's Alan here on the farm on Route 66. And it's the first day of irrigation for us. And I realized as we were back in Oklahoma talking to friends that irrigation is kind of a unknown or under, ununderstood, is ununderstood? Anyway, it's not understood. Irrigation is not very well understood. I hope I said all that right. Anyway. Because there's a lot of parts in the country that get lots of rain. And so they don't understand why you need to have irrigation. Well, let me show you. Like this is just literally half a mile from our house. So without irrigation, this is what the land would look like. It's a beautiful morning. I love the sound of the water coming out. And the sun's just barely coming up. And I'm, I'll show you some more irrigation, just so you kind of understand. But with hay prices the way they are, it's a welcome relief to start getting some grass growing. And then I can pasture this off to my cows and horses. And so during the summer, I feed a lot less hay, but it's not free to own shares in the irrigation company. They cost, if you can find them, and they're very hard to find because all the shares are already owned. So maybe if someone mo moves or something, they may sell some shares. But last I, was, I checked is if you could find a share, it was about $1,000 per share, which allows us about 15 minutes of the full ditch every about eight days so i know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but i can't handle the whole full ditch so me and some other guys go in kind of as a co-op we lump our shares together and so we get more and more 15 minute segments say we get 20 hours every eight days and that seems pretty good but you gotta remember, we're normally not getting rain in between like most of you do. And what grows, grows. And that's that's what we gotta live with. But anyway, I'll take you along today and show you some irrigation and you'll see it off and on throughout the rest of the summer. If you have questions about irrigation, go ahead and put them in the comments below. So now I'm at the bottom of that field and you can see it's, it's not even close, but here in several hours we'll be starting to look better. But I've got to get ready to go to work and I've actually enlisted Casey to come home during the school day and check on it, which is pretty cool. So when this gets to the bottom of this field, it'll fill this up. Looks like a pond here, about a six inch deep pond. And then it will go out of this little pipe here. There's a pipe over where my dogs run around over there. And it will water this little section right here. That water there is from the neighbors overflow. They got watered before I did. So we don't normally have a pond unless someone's just irrigated. The blessing is, so this will turn green there. And then over there where Eho and Nolly are. My irrigation's going behind my house and that the overflow from that will come fill this field. And then I bought seven acres across the freeway, across the old Route 66. And all the overflow from my neighbor's irrigation goes under the freeway and waters that. So I'm super blessed that I don't even have to pay for that water. I just get the overflow 
that would just be wasted. It goes under the freeway and happens to go in my field, which is pretty awesome. So this may not be interesting to a lot of you, but my friend Colby Mack from Mississippi, go check out the Max channel. They're amazing. They have a YouTube channel. They have six kids. They are way into food preservation and self-reliance. Just a great family. Go check them out. But he could not believe that we have to water. That's weird. And if you've watched all the storms and flooding going on in Mississippi, we pray for them that they're okay with the floods and we pray for water. It's, it's interesting um, how some of us need one thing and, and some don't need the exact thing. Grateful for prayer that we can be specific in our needs and pray for our friends and so Casey's coming down and I'm gonna show her some stuff real quick so I asked Casey to run down and I'd show her and she comes down without a coat but looking cute ready for school all right Casey I'm gonna show you some stuff this field is gonna fill up with water but the first water of the season is gonna it's gonna float a bunch of manure and sticks and stuff it's gonna plug up right here and there's two other pipes down there okay so i need you to walk along this bank and get a shovel and kind of clean out those holes or try to pull some of the some of the yucky stuff up on the the hill so that those pipes can drain well you look cute thanks but when it's cold outside you should wear a coat <laughs> All right, I'm gonna show everybody the rest of the irrigation. Now I'm up behind my house and same type of system, but as those of you that have watched our tree video know, I had to cut down a tree and we are all sad about it, but we're afraid it, the roots have got into the irrigation system because we're just not getting the volume that we need through that pipe. And that's frustrating. Well, I hope we get enough water to water this this you know, time. I have a gated pipe that comes up out of the ground that I buried from the ditch. I've done that years ago and it's worked well, but we're starting to have some issues just because of age. Once this fills up, it goes down to the next overflow down where Eho was and Nolly. Look at our goats and sheep this morning. Those babies sure are cute. And they're oblivious to me irrigating this morning. Last year we planted this apple tree. And right at the end of the season we had a goat get out and just tear it to pieces. I don't know if it's going to survive. I sure hope it does. But... I don't know. We may have to dig it out and put another one, but this is pretty cool. When the irrigation comes, I'll dig this out and it'll fill up this apple tree right here. So I just dug it out a little bit and it's gonna come down here and it fills this up. It's hard to see, but anyway, it fills up this little hole here. And then once it's high enough, it just runs right back into the field. It works really good. I just hope that our tree's still alive. It's still pliable, so I sure hope so. But it got torn up so bad, I, I wonder if it'll ever be healthy. Anyway, tell me what you think. If you, you're into apple trees or should I replant or should we see if this one makes it? Well guys, I'm gonna show you something else here. I hope someone finds this interesting. If not, maybe my posterity will think it's cool. Let me turn it around and show you. So, years ago, there was a 
canal dug by the early pioneers in this area about five miles from the river and they would try to dam up the river even though there wasn't much water to dam up. Most of the year there's very little to any water in the river and so the monsoon rains would come and all of a sudden it would wash the dams out. Anyway they finally found some bedrock that they could build a diversion dam about five miles up the river and they could divert some water into the canal. It was a it was a mess. As technology and advancements came, the settlers of, of this community started digging some wells and then they would put the water into the canal. So then you had a consistent source of water instead of just the sporadic rainwater. Well, just in the 20 years we've lived here, they've buried most of the canal, but there's still some wells. One of those wells happens to be here close to our house. And so I'll go over there and show you so it's dumping water into the canal. And then I'll, I'll show you from here, just a so. I had to walk across this cattle guard, didn't want to fall in, so. It looks like we have water everywhere. It looks like Mississippi or whatever, but this is just irrigation water. And uh, anyway, kind of cool. So right now this pump's running and it's dumping water into this probably 36 inch pipe that is laying where the canal used to be or the open ditch so it's running water down underground and then when it's our turn to irrigate there's a head gate in the canal or in the in the pipe down there about 100 yards 200 yards as we shut that down, it backs the water up and then I can open water to me. And so I open it with this valve, comes out this pipe and this pipe, it, this is backing up and it'll water this land. This is not my land but my friend's happy to have water on his property. And if it overflows, it fills his pond that he can water his cows out of. There you go, the water's coming out. I've got it right at the right level. But because that tree that I had to take out of my yard is blocking the pipe, I'm not getting as much flow through there. So it's backing up more than I would like it to here. And I'm not getting the amount of pressure I want out on my field. So I've got to make some changes, but hopefully that's interesting to you to see how that works. Another thing I like about irrigation is for Arizona horses, if they're just out on ranges, they may never step in water ever. And so, so this is good for them to learn that they can walk through water. <laughs> well, as I say that, these horses have been out on the reservation. They've never seen irrigation. But pretty soon, they won't have a choice but to walk in the water. And then when I go somewhere there is water, they're accustomed to walking through it.